A state senator from District 13 in Michigan is making national headlines. Her name is Mallory McMorrow. She was accused this week by a fellow state senator of wanting to, and I quote, teach, groom, and sexualize kindergartners. McMorrow responded to that attack with a blistering, impassioned, and personal speech. Listen. I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd district had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. So I sat on it for a while wondering why me? And then I realized because I am the biggest threat to your hollow, hateful scheme. Because you can't claim that you are targeting marginalized kids in the name of, quote, parental rights if another parent is standing up to say no. So who am I? I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom who knows that the very notion that learning about slavery or redlining or systemic racism somehow means that children are being taught to feel bad or hate themselves because they are white is absolute nonsense. Well, the clip of her nearly five-minute speech has been uh, seen by nearly 14 million folks online and counting. And Senator McMorrow joins me now. Senator, I know it's been a heck of a week for you, so I do appreciate you taking some time. But to get maybe some of our viewers caught up here who might not have been following it, to hear that someone accused you of wanting to teach, groom, and sexualize teenagers. This came from uh, a fellow state senator, uh, Lana Tice. What is she talking about there? It is horrific. It's disgusting. And, you know, it wasn't even teenagers. It was kindergartners. And it is this trend that we are seeing around the country of targeting the LGBTQ community and, frankly, anybody who supports them and calling them groomers and supporting pedophiles. And it's pulling QAnon conspiracy theories into the real world in a very dangerous way. Um, Senator McMorrow, you, you made a point here, calling yourself a straight, white, married, Christian, suburban mom. And you did that to make a grander point of everybody who's not that should not feel marginalized. And, and there's often a debate in this country where these types of voices and that type of speech gets through. And people will say, you know what, those voices, those extreme voices too often do get through and do get coverage. But why do you think it is important for that speech and this particular story and that language to get coverage right now? We need it because there are too many people like me who are too comfortable, who stand by and say that these attacks are not about me, so I'm not going to step into this, it's not my place. But every time we do that, it allows this hatred to keep growing, it allows these attacks to keep going, and it allows those voices to be the loudest voices in the room when I know that most straight white Christian suburban moms like me don't feel this way. We're not hateful and these people do not speak for us. Has Senator Tice reached out to you? No. Um, do you want that phone call? No, it, it really isn't about that. She has destroyed any relationship that we did have, but what I'm hoping is that more people like me stand up and say no and shut this hate down. And, and to your point as well in the speech, you were, you were speaking to a larger audience and said hateful people will tell you otherwise. <laughs> That the word hate, do you, do you find, is it hateful speech or do you think people like her, when things like this come out, that she fits into a category of a hateful person? Yes, because you can't claim to support and want to protect children if you're simultaneously putting up language and policies and messages that directly targets an already marginalized community of kids. The LGBTQ community is four times as likely to attempt suicide as those who are not. So yes, this is hateful language and you can't say it and, and claim otherwise. Uh, last thing, I know you said you're, you talked to your mom and your mom shed tears and cried over this. Did, did you? Yeah. I know you were angry, but did you shed tears over this? And also, how, did, how does your daughter, who's one year old, doesn't understand what's going on, play into this whole episode now for you, having a, a, your, your child, your one child, and a one year old at the house? Uh, it, it did. You know, when I took a moment, I, I cried too because it was an attack against me that could have very real consequences. We saw what happened in D.C. when somebody believed that there was a, a basement of children uh, that were captured by pedophiles in a pizza place. A gunman went in and opened fire. That is what happens here. So I look at my daughter and I, I cried 
thinking about the future that she's growing up into. I want one where she is welcome and she meets people who are different than she is and is curious about them and, and kind, not hateful. All right, and I want our viewers to know we did reach out to Senator Tice. We did not hear back with a response. Uh, maybe we will down the road. Uh, Senator uh, McMurrow, I know it's been a busy week and a crazy week, um, but again, maybe something good can come out of this. But we thank you for your time, and you try to have a good weekend, okay? You too, TJ. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.